Hi, and welcome to the Library 2035 Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries webcast series. My name is Sandy Hirsch, and I am the editor of this book. I am pleased to host this webcast series featuring several of the book's contributing authors who will share their vision for libraries over the next decade. Today, I welcome Joel Nichols, author of chapter 22, Come Back Yesterday, Paradoxes of Library Progress. Joel Nichols is Chief of Neighborhood Libraries at the Free Library of Philadelphia in Philadelphia. Uh, Nichols is the author of Out of This World Library Programming, Using Speculative Fiction to Promote Reading and Launch Learning, and iPads in the Library. He also writes fiction. To, throughout chapter 22, Joel presents several paradoxes that emphasize the various dilemmas that libraries face, such as the paradox of library progress, the paradox of library access, the paradox of diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, and also the paradox of library neutrality. He posits that libraries should incorporate strategies and methodologies, such as natural foresight, to overcome these dilemmas and to help, think, help them think about innovate and design a new future for their organization, services, and community. He concludes with strategies that libraries could consider to offset some of today's challenges in library service and that could launch a new future for libraries. So welcome, Joel Nichols. I'm really excited to talk to you today. Thanks, Dr. Hirsch. It's a pleasure. So I'd like to uh, kick off our conversation today by asking you to share briefly your vision for the future of libraries in 2035. Thanks. The future is scary and unknown, and libraries and librarians might have only a few tools already at their disposal. I want to apply some of the principles of natural foresight, this cutting edge discipline of futurism, to what I see as some of the more entangled promises of public library service. And crucially, foresight can help librarians pull the future they want to create instead of just passively react uh, and receive forces of change. That's great. I think having some strategies and approaches for navigating our future is really important. So I'm glad that you are tackling, uh, you're addressing that, that topic. As you're looking into the future, what are you most concerned about? I think right now I'm most concerned about some of the, the backlash against progress we've made as a country, as a nation, uh, particularly in terms of anti-racism and diversity and inclusion. Um, I'm concerned how that's manifesting itself in book challenges and challenges against specific school and public librarians in, in states. Um, yeah, I think that's that's what I'm most worried about right now. Yeah, there's a lot that is going on, and uh, so you've identified a lot of um, serious concerns. That said, what are you most excited about for the future? I, you know, I think the it's the other side of the same coin that I think um, I'm. We you can already see evidence of communities fighting back against these these uh, you know baseless bans um, and asserting that they value their library services and programs and materials and their diverse library materials. Um, you know, there there sort of been recent electoral victories on school boards here in Pennsylvania and elsewhere in the country um, that have that signaled to me that um, you know you're the your average American family, whatever that means, uh, isn't it? Doesn't stand for this. Doesn't it? Doesn't want to stand for for these challenges. Um, and that's that's you know, um, that's uh, that makes me a little hopeful. Well, that's good. We all need some some <laughs> yeah, hope, some sense of hope and uh, brighter times when we're looking to the future for sure. Um, what do you think has had the biggest impact on libraries over the past decade? This is a big one. There, you know, there are so many things. Um, I think, uh, as I was thinking about, you know, trying to crystallize this, I really think, in my context, austerity mindsets, austerity budgets, this notion that we have to do more with less, you know, do more with with fewer people, do more with, you know, lend lend more with fewer resources, uh, with a smaller materials budget, um, and trying to be all things to all people. I think, um, to me, that's felt, um, you know, sort of that's felt like. Um, 
that been sort of the, the swing of the field for, for me over the past decade. Um, and um, I hope that it's not going to be anymore. Yeah, that has been, um, I think, uh, something that we have done for a very long time is doing more with less. And I always feel, at least for me, I'm not sure what you think, um, but some of that's because we care so much about our community. We want don't want to shortchange them. <laughs> so we try to do with what we have. And uh, but it, it, there's limits to that. Yeah, I was thinking about that in terms of this uh, Twitter conversation I saw the other day of this librarian. I respect a school librarian who was amplifying this message um, of, you know, please don't allow playgrounds inside public libraries or play spaces, which, you know, um, I think is categorically wrong. I think that the public library is the perfect place for for young kids and families to experience playful experiences. Um, and that's just sort of like one example of like, um, you know, the that it's easy to say, you know, we're trying to be all things to all people, but um, th there are very important uh, aspects where uh, w we, we do need to assert our value and, um, our communities usually tell us what they want. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I mean, being connected to the community is, is really important, what they, what they need and want. So what do you think will have the biggest impact on libraries in the next decade? Um, I hope, so my, my personal vision is really investing in library staff, library workers and librarians. Um, I think investing in staff as the primary agents of action and change, um, staff are in many ways sort of the primary patron or you know customer zero of your library um they experience it so intimately and closely um that i think supporting and developing staff as well as resourcing them make sure making sure they have the resources to carry out um this the sort of grand vision um resourcing them to be resilient and adaptive um will will be um, advantageous for libraries for years to come yeah, I think that we definitely need to be investing in our staff. And I uh, think that you've outlined some of the uh, some of the things that will uh, need to change and, and be invested in to help us be successful. Um, has your thinking changed at all since you've written your chapter? Um, maybe a little, like I said earlier, I may be a little more optimistic. I see communities fighting back against banning trans and queer and black history materials. Um, my changing though about, you know, uh, em embracing the future has not changed. Um, as one of my favorite writers, probably my favorite writer, Octavia Butler wrote a lot. Um, g g she wrote God is change, uh, the sense that God is going to change rather is going to come anyway. Change is going to happen to you. Um, so, uh, you can either let it happen to you or you can, you can make it happen the way that's good for you and healthy for you and productive for you and your communities. And I think, um, you know, I think um, my thinking hasn't really changed to strengthen that, like, that that's got to be our approach that, you know, let's not wait to be swept away in the wave. Right. Yes, that's great. And that's a good segue to my next question in terms of what advice you might have for information professionals as they look toward the future, the next 10 years. Um, I think I think it'd be very interesting to know like what some of like what people would have said about this question historically like thinking like you know learn to touch type or learn to code or you know <laughs> wh whatever the thing would be right like learn ancient greek learn who, who knows what um i think i think staff for the future for the next 10 years um i think um library workers and library staff should invest in diversity equity inclusion and belonging in meaningful and even radical ways that might challenge their norms individually and the norms of their institutions um i think this is going to look different across communities but pretty much everywhere in north america i can say um, and every institution should include confronting anti-Black prejudice and institutionalized patterns of anti-Blackness. Um, I think that that is going to hugely benefit uh, librarians um, and, you know, sort of librarianship as a field going forward. Great. And is there anything that information professionals can do to better prepare for their desired future? Yeah, I think so. I, I want to return to this notion of um, pulling and pushing the future. So that um, that that 
we, they, library workers, we can create the futures that we in our communities desire and need. Um, and so this, this notion that there's a difference between the push of the future and the pull of the future, as in don't let em emergent factors force you to act or push you down a path. Um, instead, use the deep relationships with your communities to leverage events, emergent factors that help you pull a desired future toward you, that help you capitalize and leverage your strengths. Um, I think um, I think that's worth repeating. Yeah, I was curious if you have an, any example of of that um, in your that you've done in your library or that you have seen in the field. Yeah, I mean, I think I really um, here's a really internal example to the leadership team at my institution a few years ago um, facing um, the emergency loss of someone and the emergency retirement of someone else for medical reasons um, and realizing that um, we didn't have enough people on the leadership team to support our neighborhood libraries and the current structure. And that in sort of uh, we as a leadership team said, here's what we're going to do. And we presented it to the executive and said, here's what we have to do. Here's, here's, here's the strengths in this, this model we're proposing to adjust and how we can rearrange this thing. And this is really a big thing we're proposing that should normally come from you boss, but we're saying it has to be done this way and it has to be done this way now. Um, and so, you know, that's a really internal example kind of off the top of my head, but um, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 it put our strengths forward and it put um, really vital and crucial needs forward. And rather than trying to say like, Oh, we have this big problem. Well, we hope some, someone can parachute in eventually and solve it. Uh, we said, you know, while we wait for the parachutes, we're going to, we're going to take these three steps. Um, and, you know, those three steps are still in place and are still, you know, have helped. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. I think that that's helpful in terms of giving an idea of, of how that, that could actually, that could work. So thank you. And then what kind, what key competencies do you think that librarians need to thrive in 2035? So another hard one, I think. Um, so I think, and uh, of course, um, librarians will need expertise in information and how to know what is reliable, what information is reliable. Um, other key competencies I see as necessary to thrive in 2035 are communication and engagement skills that build meaningful relationships um, inside an organization. And then, you know, particularly in my public library context between the organization and its communities. Um, and and uh, I sound a bit like a broken record, but a commitment and demonstrated action advancing anti-racist action in the workplace. Great. Yeah, no, I think that's it's worth repeating. So I think that's important that you to highlight. So I have my last question is if you could define your view of libraries in six words of the future of libraries. Yeah, this is a hard one. I haven't count, had to count, you know, words and syllables so much in a long time. Um, okay, I have I have two takes at this question. If you'll okay, permit me, fair one enough. is yeah. one is one is very hokey, um, and so I'll say that one last. Um, so 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 the hokiness sticks with folks. Now the so the, the one the one that I think is really real is um, co create the futures your communities need. So, you know, you you have the power to um, help help. Uh, people in vulnerable people in in scary times, um, you know, figure out which resources are there for them. And then sort of the, the hokier version of that is the slogan, more slogan version of that is uh, change always comes prepare, not repair. So, you know, this notion that um, if you can, if you can take proactive action, you have to do less reparative work afterwards. Uh, but if you, you prepare and um, leverage your strengths in the beginning, you're not going to, you're not going around doing a lot of fix it um, and repair work later. I love those. They're both great. Oh, They're both great. Thank you so much. Well, Joel Nichols, thank you so much uh, for joining me today and for your contribution to Library 2035, Imagining the Next Generation of Libraries. It has been a real pleasure to talk with you and to hear about your vision for the future of libraries. So thank you so much. Thanks, Sandy. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you for attending this webcast with Joel A. Nichols, author of Chapter 22, Come Back Yesterday, Paradoxes of 
um, Paradoxes of Library Progress. To view additional author webcasts for this Library 2035 uh, webcast series, please visit the link or use the QR code on your screen. Thank you again for attending.